Hello everybody, my name is Debbie, welcome to my channel and today's book is Bad Behaviour by Sheila O'Flanagan. I'll probably finish this in about a couple of weeks and it is so good. I've managed to get some suntan lotion on it because it's beautiful outside and after I film this I am going out and sunning myself. I'm already getting a bit of colour, I'm see-through usually so yeah. I'll just give you a quick read of the blurb. Darcy has it all. A high-flying career, an apartment in the centre of Dublin, and a wardrobe bursting with designer labels. Okay, so she doesn't have Mr. Wright in her life at the moment, but she's not short of admirers. So why does an unexpected wedding invitation send shivers down her spine? Because the groom, Aidan, dumped her for her ex-best friend. Neve's now living across the Atlantic, but she's coming home to get married. It's going to be the event of the year, and Neve wants all her friends to be there especially Darcy. Isn't now the time to put the past behind them? But can Darcy really forgive her oldest friend and allow Neve's wedding to go without a hitch? Or is it possible that Aidan was meant to be hers after all? <coughs> dun, dun, dun. It's a nice rom-com, I guess you could say it is. Set in Ireland, you've got the points of views of Darcy and Neve. Um, throughout the story, you kind of get flashbacks to their friendship and the relationship that Darcy had with Aidan and kind of how Aidan and Neve ended up together and Darcy ended up where she is. There's a few Mr. Rights, I guess, or Mr. Not So Right, I should say, in Darcy's life, because um, it's basically set 10 years after Neve steals Aiden from Darcy. And so that's why we got the flashbacks. It starts off in the modern day. Um, I don't actually know when this bit was published actually. First published in 2007, in paperback in 2008. To be fair, there's nothing really in there that really dates it that much, I don't think. So you've got the friendship between Darcy and Neve, which you keep getting through flashbacks. Uh, of Darcy kind of remembering what happened and kind of how she's ended up where she is. You look at the, I guess there's a bit of bad behaviour from everybody really, because you've got bad behaviour from Darcy in relation to how she feels about relationships now. She goes from, because you've got Aidan, and then she gets married after Aidan and they split up and then he comes back into her life. It's just, it's a nice book. Nothing too strenuous. I kind of guessed where it was going to go, but not quite. Because I think when the wedding invitation comes through, Darcy's in a bit of a shock. Mainly because she thought they were already married, because it's ten years later. Neve has got it into her head that money is everything. Even though she's got Aiden, and Aiden has been with her for ten years, she still has this insecurity that she did essentially steal Aiden from Darcy. I'm not saying that Aiden didn't have a say in it because he was the one who stopped the relationship with Darcy to get with Neve. But you've got all this bad behaviour on all sides from everybody. And then the ultimate twist in it is the question over Neve's bad behaviour and how far she went to secure her dream life. And there's a lot of kind of the grass is green on the other side on there because Neve is jealous of Darcy and Darcy is jealous of Neve. Aiden, when he finally does see Darcy after all these years, the same for Darcy when she sees Aiden, they both realise how much they've actually moved on. And it's trying to, as it, it's a good breakup book. I think it's a good breakup book. If you've been heartbroken, I think it's a good book to read to kind of put things into perspective. It's more or less a happy ending. But not quite who you think it's going to be though. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. As I said, rom-com lovers will love a good rom-com. It's a good breakup book. It's quite empowering because um, it even says on the first line of the blurb, Darcy has it all, a high-flying career and a pump in the centre of Dublin and a wardrobe best with designer labels. She's just missing Mr. Right. And I feel like this kind of proves that she doesn't need to have a man in her life to have the life that she wants. Because as you go through, you know, she feels like she's kind of fallen into her career by accident. And she has this dream of having like a farm in Tuscany. And you, she's starting to figure out if the kind of like the Italian dream life is actually her dream. Or if she's accidentally fallen into her dream life. Yeah. <laughs> 
I can hear kids playing outside. It is beautiful outside. What am I doing inside talking about a book? <laughs> but anyway, um, I feel like I've said quite enough about this. Um, but so I did really, really enjoy this book. It took me about a week or two to read it. Mainly read it outside in the garden because the weather's been quite nice recently. Because it's done from both points of view of Darcy and Neve. To, in the beginning, I really hated Neve. And I think it's written like that because you're not supposed to side with Neve initially. And then as you go through and you get more of Neve's story, you start to see the character soften a bit. Because Darcy starts off as quite um, blunt and she's at a point where she's just like, she doesn't expect people to be friendly with her because um, she feels a lot of people are intimidated by her because she's insanely smart, she speaks multiple languages and for her job that's an asset because um, it means that she brings in a lot of business uh, in Europe. And then a company gets taken over, she's, everything's switched up on her and instead she's sent out to Asia to, and somewhere where she's out of her comfort zone because she doesn't know Asian languages, she knows European languages and so she feels like she's thrown in at the deep end. She's wondering if um, this is the point when people will realise that maybe this isn't where she's supposed to be and she's really scared of the upcoming trip to Asia and trying to figure out if she's actually good at her job. So there's a big question mark over her job um, throughout the book. Um, to be fair, there's a question mark over both of their jobs because uh, it says Neve's across the Atlantic. She, Neve and Aiden end up in America. She's made a wonderful investment that she thinks is gonna pay off big time and she's using the money she's invested to pay for the most lavish wedding you can think of in a castle. It's very soap drama-y. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a really good book. I really enjoyed it. You know, you've got the po you've got your characters. There's no real baddie in it, but there is a point when you don't like Neve. There's a point when you don't like Aiden. To be fair, there's even a point when I wasn't the biggest fan of Darcy. You're just, as I said, it's called bad behaviour. It's in the title. There's bad behaviour from every single person in this book, and you're trying to figure out if the bad behaviour kind of outweighs the good behaviour or vice versa but I really enjoyed it. I can definitely imagine this as just like a proper rom-com movie. I think it would really work like that. But yeah, so Bad Behaviour by Sheila F. Flanagan. If you um, are reading it or you haven't read it and you want to, you can talk to me in the comments um, about anything about the book or any other books that you want me to read. Um, I'll admit I've got about 18 books on my bookshelf at the moment that I'm making my way through. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. My name is Debbie. I've got more book reviews on the way. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you next week for another video. Bye, my lovelies. Mm -hmm.